All right, hello friends. Welcome to our New Testament study in the book of Luke. We are in uh, Luke 14. And I am reading in the King James Version of the Bible. Whatever version of the Bible you have, feel free to turn along and follow along with Mr. Bear. And we're going to enjoy some nice New Testament Bible studies on a nice, brisk, cold Wisconsin night. And it came to pass, as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. Jesus answering spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? Wow, here we are running into the same uh, scenario with the Pharisees. Um, why do they have this hang-up about healing on the Sabbath? Well, I'll tell you why, because they couldn't heal at all. And they had to come up with something, because that's when all these people came into the synagogue was on a Sabbath. So they had to create a new rule. You know, if you've ever worked for an employer, and that, like, every couple of weeks are changing the rules again. And it's like, you can't keep up with all the rules. And, um, um, you know, and they come up with the rules to harass you. And the Pharisees, they're coming up with a new rule to harass Jesus. Because they could, you know, they had the power at that time. They were the Pharisee officials and the chief, you know, whatever. And they could come up with new rules and harass the people. They could harass Jesus. Most importantly, thought was the coolest thing. But Jesus had a little something special for them. Because he could heal. And he could heal any day of the week that he wanted. And they held their peace, and he took him and healed him and let him go. And answering them, saying, Which of you shall have a donkey or an ox fallen into a pit, and will straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him again to these things. And he put forth a parable to those who were bidden, when he marked how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them, when thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. A hey, pride goeth before a fall. That is a great Old Testament scripture. When you think to be proud in your life, watch out, friend, because that's when you're going to fall. Don't be proud. If God's moving in your life, it's God moving in your life. Not you. It's God moving in your life. And in the worldly institutions, say the United States, the United States takes a lot of credit for the things that has been blessed upon the United States, but it's not them. It's not people. It's the blessings of God. It's the blessings of God because there is some salt and light here in this country left. Not much, but a little. Verse 10. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room. And when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher, then thou shalt have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. It's mutter much better for somebody to say, "Come up here and sit next to me up on the in the high place or whatever." Then you go on up there and sit, and they say, "I'm sorry, friend, but you haven't been invited." Remember that as a principle in our lives. Don't exalt yourself. Let God get the glory, and if He chooses to. Move you up the ladder, a rung or two, so be it. Whether it lasts or doesn't last, it's not us, it's him.
For whoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made unto thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maim, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt re be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Jesus is making it very clear here, when you have these, you know, let's clap for the pastor banquets. Just remember, it's not about the pastor. It's about Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ would have you seeking out the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, the helpless. Those are good things. Those are good works. <laughs> Frequently, when people have a big dinner party, they invite the most influential in their social circles. But in Christianity, God forgive us if we do that. That's not what Christianity is about. Christianity is about stretching out your hands and your heart to those that really don't have much of anything, both financially, physically, spiritually, emotionally. It's about reaching out to a lost world, not the social club. Verse 15, And when one of them heard that had sat at meat with him. He said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Wow, this man, I don't think this man really understood who he was dealing with. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. The other said, I have brought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. Another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord all these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done that thou hast commanded, and yet there is still room. The Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men who are bidden shall taste of my supper. I hate to say this, but Jesus came to the Jews first. And he did, that's the truth. And yet, most of the Jewish peoples, the Jewish nation, rejected him. And therefore, Jesus went to the Gentiles. And I can, you know, praise the Lord for that because I'm one of them. And it's sad for the Jews. The Jews are going to have to go through suffering again. But you know what? If you reject Jesus Christ, the Messiah, especially when you know better, woe are you. Verse 25. And there went great multitudes from him, and he turned and said unto them, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life he cannot be my disciple. You come to Jesus Christ, expect the unexpected. Now, the Marine Corps has this uh, ideology, is a, a constant state of readiness. And, and I accept that. And um, 
I thought uh, my sh brief stint in the Marine Corps was very interesting. And understanding what it takes to be in a constant state of readiness in the physical realm has quite a bit of preparation involved to do that. In the spiritual realm, I'm going to tell you, as a Christian, if you want to be on fire for Jesus, expect the unexpected. A wise king never seeks out war, but he must always be prepared for it. So I'm going to tell you in advance, be prepared for this war. When the day comes and your mother hates you because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Maybe your father hates you because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Perhaps your children hate you, or one or two of them hate you out of four or five. Or maybe all of them hate you because you've said, no, children, you cannot do this. No, children, you're not going to be allowed to have this in the house or whatever. There's a war going on. Expect the unexpected. Be in a constant state of readiness for anything that might pop up. Because Jesus said, you must choose me over everybody and everything you love. You must choose me above all or you cannot be my disciple. Be ready to give it all up if it happens that way. And don't give up your love for Jesus Christ. Whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You must take on that cross of sufferings, friend. Persecutions. The war can never be over in your life. Fighting for righteousness and truth in Christ can never be over. It will never be over. You must always wage the war against sin, the flesh, the devil, the world. You must always be in a constant state of readiness. We go on. Verse 28. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation is not able to finish it all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassador and, dial, and desireth conditions of peace. He wants to parley. <laughs> so likewise, whosoever be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. He cannot hang on to sin. You cannot hang on to your worldly possessions. You cannot hang on to the God of mammon and partying. Be ready to give it all up if the Lord says so. Give it all up. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. And he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. I pray for you, my friend, and I pray for me always, every day when I get out of that bed, that I will have ears to hear, and not just ears to hear what the world is saying, but ears to hear spiritually what Jesus Christ is saying to me. I pray that for me, I pray that for you. So from the Bears Gym, I hope you've enjoyed our little time in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 14. And I pray that you would be salt. I pray that I would be salt. I pray that our ears will hear. And I pray that our eyes will be clear. Because the eyes are the light of the body. And may your lights shine very bright. God bless you, my friend.